Let's start part two of 4.4. So the permutation rule. So this happens when some items are identical to others. So previously, like we have 50 states and we chose four capitals. None of the capitals are repeats or identical to the other. They're all unique. So this is something we have to use whenever there are identical items. So it says there are n items available and some items are identical to others. We select all n of the items without replacement. So we're selecting all of them and we are not replacing. So if we take it out of the bag, let's say we have a bag of marbles, we take it out. We don't put that marble back in once we write down what we have. This is without replacement. Um, we consider rearrangements of distinct items to be different sequences. So this is a permutation. So we are going to use n factorial over, so this is our total. And then n1 factorial, n2, I'm gonna explain what those are in a minute. Factorial, n3 factorial, dot, 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 nk factorial. N1, N2, N3, and NK are the repeated items. And N is like how many times it was repeated. How many of those repeated items are in your list or in your bag that you're choosing from? So an example of this would be how many ways can the letters of the word Mississippi be arranged? So we are arranging all the letters. We're using all those letters over and over and over again, but we have some repeats. Let's first find how many total items are there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we need to figure out how many or what letters repeated and how many times those repeated. So I is a repeat, one, two, three, four. It repeats four times. And then S repeats one, two, three, four times also. And then P repeats two times. It's 10 plus M that would make 11. So we've accounted for all of them. So we use the formula in factorial. So that'd be 11 factorial over. So N1 would be 4. N2 would be 4. And N3 would be 2. It doesn't matter the order because we're just multiplying them. So this would be 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. So this is how many different arrangements there are. So previously we learned how to simplify and then put the calculator. Well, there's so much going on in this. I would just say put it in the calculator as a fraction. So remember factorials under math, over to probability, down to factorial. So 
So the reason why we divide it by those is because they're repeats. They're not unique. So you can take out several different sequences because they'd be the exact same because you're using I four times. So that's why you're able to divide those out, which makes you have less arrangements. Still a lot of arrangements, though. So uh, 34,650 different arrangements or sequences of those letters. So go ahead and do the next one, example two, and then we'll check it. How many ways can the letters of the word trigonometry be arranged? So follow the same steps. I'm going to go ahead and go over it. Make sure you have the same um, outcome as me here in a minute. So N is 12. There's 12 different letters. O is repeated two times. T is repeated two times. And R is repeated two times. Is that what y'all got? Yes. All right. Okay. So then we do, we make this N1, this N2, this N3. So we have 12 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. And that comes out to 59,875,200. Is that what you got? All right, so these are permutation when order matters. So when different orderings of the same items are counted separate, separately, we have a permutation problem. When different orderings of the same items are not counted separately, we have a combination problem. So the way to remember this is, remember how I talked about permutation position, order matters, so write that down. Order matters. So it's the traveling salesman problem. How many different routes? So a hint on problems like this would be how many different routes, <laughs> routes. Or arrangements. Or keyword would be routes. So the position matters, order matters. Okay, and then combination, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. Combination, we're going to talk about committees. So think about a committee being formed. Let's say your class officers, say just the top five people who get the most votes are your class officers. That would be a combination. Doesn't matter what order they were chosen or who had the most, they're all in the same committee. Order doesn't matter. So order doesn't or does not matter.
So let's do a couple of combination problems. So for combination, remember this is your committee, combination committee, which means order doesn't matter. Let's say you're going to um, select numbers for the winning jackpot for the lottery. It doesn't matter what order they come out with as long as you get those five matching numbers or six matching numbers. So this is when selecting R of N different items without replacement, we consider rearrangements of the same items to be the same. So this is where ABC is equal to CBA. So we're not choosing all of them. We're only choosing part. So like 50 choose four. So number of combinations of R items selected in different items. N choose R. So this is actually an option in the calculator. Did y'all see that whenever you did the NPR? That's a permutation. Yeah. It's number three. The formula is N factorial over N minus R factorial, and then you take R factorial, um, divide it out. So in the match six lottery, winning the jackpot requires that you select six different numbers from one to 49. The same six different numbers must be drawn in the lottery. If the winning numbers can be drawn in any order, find the probability of winning the jackpot where one ticket is purchased. So we have a total of, if it's one to 49, how many total numbers can we choose from? 49. And we are selecting six of them. So R is six. So we can use the NCR this time. So it'll be 49C6. So 49 choose 6. So let's go ahead and just use calculator math. Over to probability. And choose R. Plug in our numbers. Check your number against me. Did I miss a number? Yeah, I missed my uh, comma there. there we go. Uh, but it doesn't ask how many different arrangements or how many different selections are. It says find the probability. So it would be probability of winning is one out of that amount. We're going to skip example two. We're just doing the top part of this. We're not going to do 4.5. So we have two problems, permutation versus combination example. So when testing a new drug on humans, phase one of a clinical test is conducted with a relatively small number of healthy volunteers. Let's assume we want to treat eight healthy humans with a new drug, and we have 10 suitable volunteers available. So N is eight, that, uh, no, N is 10. And R is eight. If the subjects are selected and treated in a sequence so that the trial is discontinued if any per, any one presents an adverse reaction, how many different sequential arrangements are possible if eight people are selected from the 10 that are available? So we have to decide, is this a permutation or a combination? Does order matter? No. Yes. 
<laughs> you change your answer quick. <laughs> so if the trial is discontinued, if anyone presents a, a bad reaction, then the order that they select them matters because let's say they give test subject one the the medicine and everything's fine. Then they move on. What about test subject two? They give him this the medicine, but then he has a bad reaction. His face blows up. So they stop the trial completely. So this is order matters. So if I were selected, I want to be the one of the last ones if this is how it's going to be. Just in case, let's see how everybody else does first, and then I'll try it. So if it's permutation, we're going to do the 10 permutate 8. This is what I got. Is that what y'all got? Okay. Let's look at the next one. We have the same eight and 10. Um, eight subjects are all treated at the same exact time. How many different treatment groups are possible? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter because they're all treated at the same time. So we're just finding combinations. They're just going to select eight, give them the drug, and move on with life. How many different combinations are there? So we would do 10, find a combination, or choose eight. Forty-five. Yeah. Big difference, right? Whether you are thinking about if order matters or not. All right, so there will be a Pearson assignment.